ladies and gentlemen, don't just give God the glory, praise, and honor in in church or in family devotions, but make sure uh, you sing hymns unto God throughout the day and give Him the glory, the praise, and honor throughout the day, no matter how you might feel, no matter what you're going through. You say, well, preacher, I'm having trouble. That's all right. You might be one of the few Christians who's doing something, who's actually doing something for God and living right before God. Job said, a man born, man born a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So just hang in there and keep your head up and your faith in God. Jesus Christ said, have faith in God. Don't be moved. Uh, don't allow yourself to be shaken. Keep your faith strong in God and pray without ceasing and obey God no matter what is going on or who else is obeying God or not. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Whitney said, fathers, husbands, if you have been negligent in this duty and great privilege, that is having, having family devotions. It's one thing to pray by yourself in the closet, that's good, but it takes something to get the whole family together to pray together. He says, repent by starting family worship today. You can't worry about all of the yesterdays you failed. Start family devotions today. Again, you may feel awkward about what to say to your wife or your children about starting, but simply say that God has convicted you of your responsibility to lead in family worship or family devotions, and you want to start at a given time today or this evening or tonight, almost certainly your wife will be thrilled, that's if she's a godly Christian wife, more than you can imagine to hear you say that. Your children may or may not be as enthusiastic, but that depends on the age as well. But that does not really matter. The less interested they are, the more your family needs family worship and family devotion. Can somebody say amen right now? Join me, my beloved, as my great-grandmother used to make us do every night. Pray with me the Lord's Prayer and mean it from your heart. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the reasons why you ought to pray the Lord's Prayer every now and then is because there's some things uh, in that prayer, which is really the disciples prayer, uh, that you normally don't pray, uh, that you normally don't mention in your prayers. It's good to be reminded of what the Lord said about prayer. It is good to be reminded of how the Lord taught us to pray. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, we continue with the family verses as we will uh, until the very end because most problems in the church today originate in the home. If the family is messed up, if the family is jacked up from the pulpit to the usher, then the church is going to be jacked up. The devil is focusing, focusing his attention not only on the church, but on individual families that make up the church. If you were the devil, that's what you would do. Verse 25, the Bible reads, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Dr. David Guzik writes in his commentary on the Bible, Jesus' attitude towards the church is a pattern for the Christian husband's love to his wife. This shows that the loveless marriage doesn't please God and does not fulfill his purpose. This is love given to the undeserving. This is love given first. This is love that may be rejected, but still loves. And remember now, love is not some pushy thing, uh, some uh, uh, sugary thing. Uh, oftentimes, love is tough. Oftentimes, love is uh, shown in tough ways. Uh, everybody knows this. We know this not only from the Bible, but we know this from literature. We know this from movies. We know this from uh, situations all around us. Uh, that love will and has uh, gotten into your face. Uh, Dave Ramsey uh, talks about how that you don't love uh, a person by enabling them to continue in their destructive ways, in his case, financially. Uh, but uh, there is something called in counseling and in psychology, uh, enabling. And enabling, these, this is done by the nice, sweet people. They know their grandchild or their child is wrong. They know that their friend is wrong. They know that their husband is wrong. They know that their wife is wrong. But they enable them. to continue in their foolish and destructive ways. When love must put on some work clothes and uh, get tough. We don't like it when it's happening, but the child always appreciates the tough parent 
the tough love parent, the tough love teacher, the tough love coach, the tough love husband, and allow me to say something to you people that many of you men don't know and many women will not admit. But if you think for one minute, sir, that your wife wants you to let her have her way and do all of the foolish things she wants to do, uh, contrary to the word of God, uh, you are a very unwise person and you don't have any discernment into women and you don't have any, any discernment into your wife. She doesn't, deep down in her heart, she does not want that. That is not showing her love. Give your wife the privilege of telling her girlfriend, girl, I can't do that. My husband's not going to let me do that. So, you know, I, I, you can count me out. I ain't going on a cruise with y'all. If I go on a cruise with anybody, it's going to be with him. You say, preacher, how do you know this? I've had two older white women and uh, uh, two black women that I can think of right now who told me so. One older pastor's wife, white lady, I was preaching in Germany and uh, she told me Preach, I know you're not married yet, but uh, one day you will be. Let me tell you something about women. I think I was getting ready to get married. And he, she said, let me tell you something about women. She said, I don't know why it is, but women will try to take control over every marriage. They will try to take the reins that is control over the marriage. Now, once they get the reins, once they get control, they don't know what to do with it, but they want it. And if you let her have the reins of the marriage, this is a white lady, this is not a fictional character, this is Mrs. Nutt. And I know some of you ladies, and she, she must be a nut, but her name is Mrs. Nutt, N-U-T-T. -T. Sweet lady, we were eating dinner, her husband and, and uh, myself and, and uh, Mrs. Nutt. And uh, she said, however, if you let her have control over the relationship, you're not going to get it back unless you take it back. I can assure you that. So don't let her have control over the relationship in the first place. She really does not know what to do with it, and she doesn't really want it. But there's something in her nature that does that. Uh, another older white lady told me we were working together. And uh, uh, she said, she said, don't tell anybody I said it, so I'm not going to give you her name. But she said, uh, every now and then, a firm slap on the behind has never hurt a woman. And she kept on walking. And I know some of you folks think she's crazy, too. And you know she's not. And she said, just as a reminder to let her know that, you know, you're in charge. And she said, uh, a firm slap on the behind uh, has never hurt a woman. And then... Uh, the two black ladies, uh, years ago, many years ago, I was involved with them, and, uh, and uh, one lady, uh, she had a boyfriend, uh, and uh, I was in the process of uh, basically taking her away from her boyfriend. It's many years ago, so don't worry about it. And uh, she told me very frankly, the reason why I'm with you 
and I like you and love you is because you don't let me have my way. That's what she told me. I could not possibly make that up. And the other woman said the same thing or something similar, similar to what she said. My point to you gentlemen is that the world has sold you a bill of goods. It doesn't matter how much he kicks up and bucks and fusses and fights and oftentimes that's nothing but trying. She's just trying to exercise some kind of control over you and see if she can push your buttons. Even, even uh, people in uh, popular culture understand that. You, you, you hear comedians even talk about it. Uh, how that oftentimes women just, they know how to push those buttons to get you in a certain way. And they like uh, that power they have over you uh, to make you dance like a puppet. And that's all it is, man. You need to stand flat-footed, all of this giving in, all of this kowtowing and bowing and falling all out, talking about how much you love her, you will kiss the ground she walks on and, and, uh, and she's putting her on a pedestal and she's telling all these lies to other people and uh, acting all lovey-dovey and And that's not really the case. Uh, all that fake stuff. Uh, that's not true love. All of this saccharine, this sugary, syrupy stuff. That's not what she wants, man. She wants it to be real. And she wants you to be man enough to love her enough uh, that if necessary you will get tough and put your foot down and mean it now don't be trying don't don't go out and try to be tough like me and you have not done this for years and now you here you are 30 years married you're going to try to put your foot down i would not advise you to do that my brother uh, just go ahead on and keep on uh doing the the stuff you've been doing and uh letting her have her way and uh not rocking the boat and uh, unless she flip it over on you, uh, you just uh, continue on in the way of, of uh, saying, well, I don't want to, uh, as my dad said, I don't want to uh, disturb the peace. So uh, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to, you, to some of you young men. Uh, you don't have to be mean, you don't have to be hateful. Uh, make sure you have a loving heart. But love, in the words of Dr. Dobson, must be tough when you're dealing with your wife, when you're dealing with your children. Uh, it must be tough. You don't have to walk around like a drill sergeant, but they need to know that you will get in their face if you need to. Now, that's just the way it is, folks. And everybody knows it. Everybody understands it. Because if you don't get in their face, there, there is somebody who will. Okay? So, you can, you can take it for what it's worth. We're not talking about being hateful. We're not talking about being mean. We're not talking about being abusive. But uh, loving and loving in the right way, uh, which uh, oftentimes needs to be tough, depending on the kind of woman you have. Now, if you have a submissive, cheerful, joyful, happy wife who gets up early, does her stuff, does her job, takes care of all of your needs, take care, takes care of your children, keeps a clean house, and man, hey, give her the world, man give her the world. Don't get on her case about nothing. Um, but if you got a rebellious woman, a stubborn woman, a disobedient woman, always trying to push your buttons, 
then you, in the back you need to do what you're supposed to do. Keep it that way. And uh, uh, then you have to you have to uh, do what you got to do. To if you have if you got one of these uh, foolish acting wives who you got to tell everything to, that she needs to do, then you better tell her and you better uh, and, and make sure it's done because it's not just about you and her; it is about you and those children. The children need to have a certain kind of environment so that they can focus on doing what they got to do and uh, schoolwork wise and everything else. Be that as it may, my beloved, I can tell some of you don't like that kind of talk, uh, but it's necessary. And I hope you don't have a wife like that you got to tell and get in her face and, and, and rebuke her and so forth and so on. And I hope you don't have children like that. But many of us do and most fathers uh, fade into the background and don't practice tough love. And you've got to do that if you want to see those children raised right and go on uh, to serve God and be a blessing to humanity. Uh, and you're talking to, uh, and, and the person who's talking to you has done that. Uh, yes, and the words about that is tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. But uh, in the end, uh, what has uh, the family accomplished? What has the family done together to, uh, uh, to help the church and to help the world come to know Christ as Savior? When the children leave home, do they go to church somewhere and uh, continue to serve God in a bigger way? like my children are doing and, and still serving with me. Uh, is it always pretty? No. But all of my seven children are serving the Lord as I speak, big time, with me and with other ministry organizations. Now, if, if before, you, so before you criticize me getting tough with my wife and my children, uh, where are your, where's your wife at? And what is your wife doing? And where are your children? And I'm talking to everybody, pastors, all of the sweet, loving people who, they, who are more sweet than God is, more loving than God is. I, I'm not going to chastise my children. Your children and your grandchildren are going to bring you down to, your, uh, to an early grave. I am not under any stress about nothing. I insist on my wife doing her job. I insist on my children doing their job. I insist. He said, well, what does it insist mean? It means whatever you want it to mean. Uh, we don't need to have a family if everybody's not going to function in the family. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, you got parents, you got, you got one parent doing everything. And they always were. You, have you seen these parents? They're always fretting. They always got that, 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 that stink look on their face like they're about to be taken down to the grave any moment because they're carrying the whole burden for the whole family oh no oh no 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 not Danny B I'm not doing that I'm not going to be uh, under that kind of stress everybody has a little stress but you can't you add stress to yourself when you're trying to be uh, and do everything you got grown children you still they're trying to take care of them when they need to be taking care of themselves and being a blessing and, and contributing to uh, the ministry and to the family. Stop doing everything for your wife, sir. Stop doing everything for your children, your grown children, and even the teenage children. They must work. They must do stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sitting on the couch with a phone in one hand, an iPhone in one hand, uh, a, a, a Kindle or a iPad in the other, and a game board in the other hand, and uh, uh, and a television right in front of them, sitting on their behinds all day. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no,
not in the White House. You've got to get it. Everybody's got to work. And if that takes tough love getting in your face, helping you to understand that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're going to get your behind whip up in here. You got to wash your own clothes. Are you kidding me? Here you are, 17, 18, 16, 19, 20. Want mommy to wash clothes for you? Are you kidding me? You're going to wash your own clothes. You're going to live, even if you're living in my house, you're going to live like you live in someplace else. Yes, that's right. You got to have permission before you do anything uh, in the White House. Oh, yeah, you just can't roam around, do what you want to do, and take what you want to take. No, no, no. You go, you, you're going to, you're going to uh, act like uh, you live in some place else. You're a guest. How's that love? No, you got your mind messed up. That's love. It's called discipline. It's called teaching people uh, to ask for things instead of swiping things and stealing things. And you go to the refrigerator to get your little uh, butter and it's all gone because the little thieves have stolen it. And they know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, my friends, gentlemen, do you hear me? Love must be tough. That book is not as popular as it used to be. But if you don't have the God kind of love going on that will motivate you uh, to deal with your teenager about their bad attitude and their bad spirit. The kind of attitude that you know will not uh, get them a job or keep, uh, keep a job. You better deal with it. You got a wife who has a bad attitude and spirit and it's spilling over on the children. She's disobedient as hell, and then she makes the children uh, twofold more the child of hell. And there's a bunch of confusion in the household. You better deal with that. Or you're going to have chaos in your family, in your household, man. Whatever. Deal with it. Whatever, 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 what happens, whatever happens. Deal with it. Because you don't have anything going on anyway. So you, you, you might as well go ahead and put your foot down. And, and stop this foolishness in Christian agape love. You ain't mad at nobody. You just want everybody to have some peace. You don't want a house, where, a house or a home where nobody wants to be there. Everybody wants to escape it and go. Charles Spurgeon said, it is possible that some husbands might say, how can I love such a wife as I have? It might be a supposable case that some Christian was unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, Danae, and found himself forever bound with a fetter uh, to one possessed of a morose disposition some of you all know what I'm talking about, of a forward temper. These are deep words, ancient words. Uh, you'll get these by free. Of a bitter spirit. My God, my God, help us. Those of, of us who are married to women who have a forward temper and a bitter spirit. Witches, full of rebelliousness, stubbornness, and pride. You preacher, uh, you are not to say it like that. But that's what it is. When you're rebellious and you're stubborn and you're bitter and you're mean as hell, you are a witch. You're practicing witchcraft. I'll never, I'll never listen to you again because that's, that describes me. Well, whatever, whatever. We'll see you later. 
he might therefore say back to the quote, he might therefore say, surely I am excused from loving in such a case as this. Surely I'm excused from uh, loving a witch. It cannot be expected that I should love that which is in itself so unlovely. My God help us. But Mark beloved the wisdom of the apostle. He silences that excuse which may possibly have occurred to his mind while writing <laughs> the passage by taking the example of the Savior who loved not because there was loveliness in his church but in order to make her lovely. So your job husband is to have agape love for your wife, the God kind of love. There is no other love. There's no Romeo and Juliet love that's in a Shakespeare uh, book. Okay? Yeah, forget that. And you know, you say, well, my thrill, the thrill is gone. With the, you know, the truth of the matter is the thrill is gone after the fourth week. You know, you know that, so. As soon as she passed gas in the bed while your head was under the covers, uh, the thrill was gone at that point. Okay, so let's let's be real. God wants you to love your wife with the agape kind of love, which is the only love. It's God's love. So, what about sex and? You know, and that caught that part of it, and so you don't have to worry about that. If you're a normal, healthy human being, that's going to happen. <clears throat> what if I don't have the Romeo and Juliet kind of love, you know, and and we don't be feeling it and so forth, and so forth, you know, those warm, cuddly feelings we had before, you know. Uh, uh, again, my beloved, you don't have to worry about that. If you're a normal, healthy individual, uh, that part of your marriage would be just fine. Because you know and I know, contrary to what you want to say, uh, in that area, what's love got to do with it? Uh, it it's, 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 uh, uh, it'll be all right. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray that you would heal every Christian marriage based upon your agape love. And uh, going not only one way but both ways but especially from the husband and let it be real and if necessary let it be tough in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake Amen uh, Ladies and gentlemen join us in reading our devotional Bible passage Psalm 109 1 through 5 mm, no 6 through uh, whatever is actually what it is. Uh, our technician made a mistake this morning. It's okay. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath. 
and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Now, beloved, regarding this deep passage, Dr. Matthew Henry writes, The Lord Jesus may speak here as a judge, denouncing sentence on some of his enemies, to warn others, when men reject the salvation of Christ, even their prayers are numbered among their sins. See what hurries some to shameful deaths and brings the families and estates of others to ruin, makes them and theirs despicable and hateful and brings poverty, shame and misery upon their posterity. It is sin, that mischievous, destructive thing, and what will be the effect of the sentence. Go ye cursed upon the bodies and souls of the wicked, how it will affect the senses of the body and the powers of the soul with pain, anguish, horror, and despair. Think on these things, sinners tremble and repent. Somebody said, Amen to the word of God. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for your holy word and for the sense of it, the understanding of it. And we pray that you would help us to meditate on your holy word today and help us to keep in mind the consequences of sin, the destruction of sin, rebelliousness, evil, and foolishness. And Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us of our sins and help us to repent of our sins and to turn from our evil ways. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake, amen. Join me, my beloved, in praying uh, for the estates. You know what they are, so let's get right to it. Holy Father God, we pray for your church. Help us to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves and uh, to seek your face and to get back to you, our first love. And we pray for uh, President Donald Trump and all governmental officials and we pray based upon your holy word that says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We pray for President Donald Trump as we prayed for all presidents since Ronald Reagan uh, nearly 40 years ago. And we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, material, physical life, protection and provision blessings upon uh, these and uh, for him and his family and his staff. And we pray that you would give these people wisdom, including Mike Pence, First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady Karen Pence, all White House staff, including Director of Political Affairs, Bill Stepien, all leaders of federal agencies, including Commission of Fine Arts, and Chairman Earl A. Powell III, all the state governors, including Montana Governor Steve Bullock, all city mayors, including Santa Ana, California Mayor Miguel Polito, all members of Congress, including California uh, Representative Barbara Lee, all law enforcement officials, including Tampa, Florida Police, 
Chief Eric Ward, all military leaders, including General David L. Goldfein uh, and James Mad Dog Mattis, Chief of Staff uh, Goldfein, that is, Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, uh, leaders of nations around the world. We pray for El Salvador's uh, President, Salvador Sanchez Seren, and we pray for Benjamin Netanyahu, who is in some trouble today, but we still see him as a modern day David. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel, uh, your chosen people. And we pray that they will come to know your Savior and uh, have your Holy Spirit not to give these people rest until they come to know your Savior so that they can rest in you. We pray for the people. We pray for the citizens in this country and around the globe. Have your Holy Spirit not to give them rest until they come to know your Savior. Save each and every soul and uh, raise up your church. Revive your church so that we can reach the people with the gospel. We pray for the media, traditional media, as well as uh, the uh, new media. That they would act according to, according to uh, uh, journalistic principles and uh, that they would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing to the, but the truth to the people. And uh, Holy Father God, hear and answer our prayers based upon your holy word. Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And help us to pray according to your will. We pray now for some current events happening around the world. We pray for the comfort of the families of the 71 people killed in a plane crash recently in Russia. I say those who are lost, who have been left behind, comfort them as long as you can. We pray for the comfort of the family of the Richardson, Texas police officer who was killed recently. They had their funeral, his funeral yesterday, and his dear wife spoke. Uh, Lord, this is uh, very painful, and, uh, and it, it is a wonderful thing that apparently they had a wonderful marriage where he loved and respected her, she loved and respected him, and, uh, uh, and they did not take themselves too seriously and uh, had one of those uh, wonderful marriages on earth, which makes it doubly painful uh, for them and others. And so we pray that you would uh, comfort the family members left behind and help them to take advantage of the support systems available to them. We pray that uh, we pray for the comfort of the families of the Westerville, Ohio police officers as well who were killed last week uh, trying to protect and serve. Uh, they gave their lives being ambushed by a devilish man. Save his soul and save everybody else. Uh, left behind and we pray for their uh, family members that you would comfort them as only you can and help them to turn to you. We also pray today for prayer requests that have come in. We thank you for the hundreds of prayer requests that have come in. Thank you for the privilege of uh, the prayer request, uh, the privilege of being able to pray for people and thank you for entrusting us with these prayer requests and help everyone on our team to pray for these people throughout the day. And Lord, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, material, physical, life, protection, and provision blessings upon them. We pray also by name for Roger. Please give him courage to share his faith and please bless his uh, the work of his hands. We also pray for Dottie. Please give her grace, mercy, peace, and clarity. Have your living water and Holy Spirit to flood her soul. Please take control of every situation that, uh, may, that may trouble her family and grant them supernatural favor and blessings from, uh, from you and from uh, people in their lives and help them to show favor as well. We pray for Roshane uh, 
in Jamaica land, help her to pass all her exams and keep her from failure, help her to be successful academically. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for those who have trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. We pray for Vijay, we pray for Namish, we pray for Macau, we pray for uh, Joe, we pray for Ken Delario, we pray for Jill, we pray for Evangeline, we pray for Penny, we pray for Bola, uh, we pray for Godfrey, we pray for Felix, we pray for Brianna, we pray for Solano, we pray for Rhett, we pray for William, we pray for Adivia, we pray for Hasanu, we pray for Kuami, we pray for Sophia, we pray for Jacobi, we pray for Asak, we pray for Amina, we pray for Ralph, and we pray for Emmanuel, we pray that you will uh, help these to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be and fill them with your Holy Spirit. And we pray for those who have recommitted their lives to you uh, as well. Uh, Lord, help these to stand strong in the faith. We pray for Christine. We pray for Frederick. We pray for Anthony. We pray for uh, Jay. We pray for Jonah. We pray for Aletta, we pray for Rachel, we pray for Jaya, we pray for Anne, we pray for Dominique, we pray for Amagella, we pray for George, we pray for Nathan, and we pray for Lola. And make sure that these are reflected on the uh, thing you list for others to pray for uh, everywhere. Yes. Holy Father God, we commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Beloved, our devotional reading for today is titled, What Manner of Love? by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. He starts with 1 John 3 verses 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. What a deep passage. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Charles Spurgeon continues by saying, Consider who we were and what we feel ourselves to be even now when corruption is powerful in us. And you will <clears throat> wonder at our adoption and at the marvelous love of God. We are called the sons of God. What a high relationship is that of a son and what privileges it brings. What care and tenderness the son expects from his father and what love the father feels toward the son but all that and more than that we now have through Christ. As for the temporary drawback of suffering with the elder brother, this we accept as an honor. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. We are content to be unknown with him in his humiliation, for we are to be exalted with him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. That is easy to read, but it is not so easy to feel. Fear not, it is neither your graces nor feelings on which you are to live. 
you must live simply by faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit shall purify your minds and divine power shall refine our bodies. Then shall we see him as he is. Amen, somebody. Holy Father God, we marvel at your love, but we praise you and we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace upon us. And Lord, help us to understand that we are your children, <clears throat> even though we may not feel it at times. And certainly we may not act like it at times. For Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us through the blood of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit in this day to do your will and not ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And for his sake, amen. Now, beloved, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the free pardon of your sins. Allow me to show you how you can put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation from sin and the punishment of sin, which is hell. First, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin and go to the funeral home and the grave. We die spiritually and go to hell. So third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This is a very, very frightening and deep verse. Please understand it. It's very serious. It's from the lips of our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hell is bad news. Hell is a place of torment and pain and darkness forever. But the good news is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. And he said in John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. He was buried and rose again. Pray and ask him to save your soul and he will save you believing that he died for, believing in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried and rose again. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13, that if thou, you, shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase, word by word, and mean it from your heart. Believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father God, <clears throat> I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have broken some of your Ten Commandments before your face. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I 
understand that I deserve hell because of my sins. But I believe your holy word and your holy gospel that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, came and took my sins away. Uh, he died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose again. So Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and uh, help me to repent of my sins past <clears throat> and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved from sin and hell and uh, you are now on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life. And that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer.